request that we rise up as we begin uh, for us to pray together and then sing a song. So let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we are grateful once again for you having given us this opportunity to be together and uh, to fellowship together in your name and to have the nourishment of our souls. We pray, dear Father, that as we begin this service, we pray, O oh God, that you may come down and be with us, that your presence, Heavenly Master, may be felt by each and every one of us, that, Heavenly Father, you may be able to bless each and every one of us, those who are gathered here physically and even those who are gathered over the live stream. We pray, dear Master, that you may take control of the service, that you may use your servant in a special way to speak your word, and, Heavenly Master, that you may inspire him in what in the direction you would want him to go we give ourselves unto you praying oh god that uh, you may circumcise our ears and help us to have nothing between our souls and you that there may be that direct link oh god that you may speak unto each one of us in a special way thank you for all things for we pray this believing and trusting in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ amen <coughs> we'll sing song number 30 higher ground, and then I'll ask Brother Karanja to come as soon as he's ready. <coughs> I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still king us, I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found Lord, plant my feet on higher ground And my heart has no desire to stay Oh, where fear arise and fears this may though some may dwell where these are bound my prayer my aim is higher oh Lord lift me up and let be stand by faith on heaven stable land a higher plane than I have found Lord plant my feet on higher ground I want to scale the utmost height, amen, and catch a glimpse of glory bright, but still I'll pray till heaven I've found, oh Lord lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher place
safari na ni safari ya imani bwana furaha yetu ni kuona tukipiga hatua kila siku na ndiposa tunaomba katika wimbo ule ukaweza kutuinua hatua na hatua zaidi kila siku bwana ndio sababu ya kuja kwetu hapa jioni hii ya leo tukitarajia kutoka kwa kwa bwana na tukiwa na imani bwana wetu Yesu Kristo kwamba utanena nasi na hatutaondoka jinsi tumeingia Mungu wetu tunaomba uwepo wako ukawa pamoja nasi ukatusaidie kutoka hapa mibarani na tukiketi kusikiliza bwana nena na mioyo yetu Mungu wetu bariki usomaji wa neno lako na ukatubariki kila mmoja wetu mahali alipo bwana hata wanaofuatilia katika mtandao kawa na njia yako kwetu mwanzoni humu hadi mwisho bwana katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini amen Aa, Mungu awabariki sana <coughs> Tuombeni tufungue Biblia zetu kitabu cha <coughs> e, Warumi 12 mahali tulikuwa tumesoma wakati mwingine sura ya 12 ya Warumi Uh, tusome huo mstari wa kwanza na wa pili Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that he present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of god wana bariki usomaji wa neno lake tutaweza kuketi uh, so <clears throat> god helping us we want to continue with the thought we had last time uh, on transformation Uh, whereby we tried to lay uh, a, a foundation uh, and maybe God helping us will continue uh, still on the thought we were on uh, we really mentioned the process and I would want to God helping us to dwell a bit on that Uh, because and I think right from the time we have, we were with the brother Maina here uh, I think I personally came a lot to think about uh, uh, this thought that we we are in a <coughs> in a process and uh, when you understand that a process is in a process uh, then you know if it is patience that will be required you have to have patience uh, you have to understand what is going on and uh, i want to thank god because uh, over the week <coughs> i happened to attend a certain ceremony and uh, i was really blessed with the what uh, uh, the pastor who took the service preached and uh, again i found him again talking about uh, a process and uh, because the way God created things in nature is that nature operates in processes and um, a process must always give a, 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 a final product or a particular end a, a particular outcome and we saw right from the beginning when God was creating Uh, the heaven and earth we saw what he started with and by the time we come to the end of genesis chapter 1 we can see a final product which 
the Bible, even the Bible records that God was happy with what he had done. And God, that's what God aspires in each and every one of us. When he, he, he came on the Mount of Transfiguration and he said, this is my son in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. And he said, hear ye him. That was a product he was happy. He was pleased in. And you did desire that in me. And you did desire that in every one of us. Jina Rabona Ripoya Sifa. That's his utmost desire to see sons and daughters who are in his image. That whatever he would want done, whatever he would want said, whatever he would want thought, meditated upon, he would say, this son has done exactly like me. This daughter of mine has done exactly like me. That is the product that God is and has been looking for all through. And that's why we are saying it is a, it is a process. And that is how nature operates. Even machines go, go to a factory. For you to have that final product, it is a process. And if you are to, have to get a genuine process, then, I mean a genuine product, then the due process must always be followed. And where man has always erred is trying to look for a shortcut. People always ignore processes. And on the other hand, they're expecting results. And for example, when after, after, after Peter, preached to them on the day of Pentecost. They, they desired what they had seen. Yeah? The, the phenomenon that presented itself on the day of Pentecost attracted the people. The Bible records that those who were about in Jerusalem came to see what was happening. And Peter preached to them to the extent their hearts were pricked. Meaning they desired something. They decided to be part of what they had had. And Peter went ahead to give a process. Because they asked, how? How can we? How, what do we do, men and brethren? And Peter answered to them and said, repent and be baptized, each one of you. You see, now that, that's a process now. So it starts, that start, begins with, repenting and the prophet would always lament that the people don't want to repent they they want to come to the altar chewing gum and laughing people don't want to be sorry for for anything they just want to be pampered into a system you see and and just to be told you see now uh, as long as we have your name on, on our records, as long as you have said some creed, then you are a good to go. And as long as you make you are you are you are you are you pay your dues and all these things with no repentance. And as if that is not enough, Peter said, and be baptized. Now <laughs> There are again the shortcuts come. And I think that's what we have been hearing. That the devil knowing the right thing, he knows how to do it, but now through a shortcut that will make you miss God's purpose. And it doesn't matter how small the error is, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the final resort, as the prophet puts it, that if that gun misses, even with the least of a fraction of an angle, what there is, is that it started on an error. 
and it will never hit where it was intended. And actually, the, the longer the projectile, the more you will see that it, it, ne it was never on target. And that's where the devil always comes by deception. That, well, he just said baptize. We can baptize in any way. Water is water. But it is avoiding God's process. Yeah, so, someone doesn't want to go into the waters. And the Bible language is clear that they went, even when Philip met the eunuch, the two went into the water. <laughs> because it's a, it's a process, you see. And it's then, as the scripture said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see. So God, God, is, not, God is not blind to what he said. He's a God of a process. He's God of processes. And he knows what, what precedes what, what you, you should do. Yeah. No, no matter how, how long it may look, uh, how long it may take, but he, he will still stick to his process. If he said this is the way, it remains the way. Jina Labwana Ripewe Sifa. So people tend to ignore God's processes and expect uh, results, but for the genuine end to be achieved. Because there's always what we call the expected end. And sometimes people don't consider the expected end. There is something called expected end. And expected end means that there is what is expected, not just an end, but what is expected. Even when people read the, 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 this verse, it's one of the, it's, it's actually a Sunday school verse, and people really console, people really console themselves with this verse. Uh, we normally read in, uh, uh, that is, I think it's Jeremiah. Yeah, in Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, is it 11, 29 or 29, 11? Let, 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 let me check. Um, is it 11.29 where we say, uh, you know, I know the thoughts I have for you. 29.11. Yeah. Yeah, 29.11 of, of Jeremiah. Uh, because there is, God has a process that is in line with his word. Is it 29.11? Eh? Yeah, and it's not it's not just something to console ourselves with. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That there is, he has an expectation. <laughs> but people just want to, to, to be soothed by these words, that I know the thoughts that I have for you they supposed to come to an expected end that is the standard of God's will. So it's not just an end, it's an expected end. So God has a process. That's why even when, he's, when, when he was speaking again, some, again somewhere we have been reading lately, in, in, in Romans uh, chapter 8, you know my read there in verse in verse 29. If you look at it, it's a process. It, it's a process. Because he said, he started with, he said, again, people like to confront themselves with this scripture. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are accord, according to his purpose. But it doesn't end there. It, 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 it's not, I would say, when it comes to God's word, the, 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 the next verses draw a distinction. Who, who, who is this that is called? Because you are not just being called, you answer to the call. There is something else. For whom, before you come to the call, there was a process. For whom he, uh, he did for a no. It is started with for a knowledge. He foreknew them. 
and, and for our knowledge, by his for our knowledge, he knew who would heed the call. Kwa kujua kwa kekimbele, alijua ni nani atazingatia wito huo. So, unaeza kuwa uko, lakini huku itua. Na, 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 na ukisikia neno huitiki, kwa sababu alijua wewe siyo wakuitika. <laughs> Mungu atusaidia sana. You see, whom he knew, uh, he for knew. For whom he for knew, what did he do? He predestinated. So, again, when people hear predestinated, say, the prophet says, it's actually not a very good word to use. Yeah. It, 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 when you use pre, pre, predestination alone, even as Paul puts it, when you read in, in chapter 9 of the, of the book of Romans, he asks, is God any fair? Is God any just? But what he sets clear, his predestination is his foreknowledge. That he foreknew the decision, whether you take the decision. And the decision you take today determines your destination tomorrow. So all he did is to foreknow who would and who would not. You know, I'm going to repair Sifa. So it's a process it started with the foreknowledge. The foreknowledge brought the predestination. And whom he predestinated, you see, whom he predestinated um, uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. And that is the end result. To be conformed to the image of his son. And that's why we were saying last time, because of the way we are born, because we bypassed something, because of the fall. We, we, we bypassed, we, we, we bypassed something, and that's why we are in this state that we are in. We are born and, uh, and, and, and shaped in iniquity, born in sin, and the way we come, we need a transformation from the way we come to what we should be. And the way we should be is in that image of Christ. The way he was brought to be that spoken word made manifest. That's the ultimate, that, that's, that's the final image. That's what he is looking for. That is the end product of this process. That at the final end, we will be in the image of Christ who is, our, who is the firstborn. General Abana Repair Sifa, who is the firstborn among many brethren. So, if he did for a no, and by his foreknowledge, he knew your destination. Now, what did he do? Whom he predestinated, whom he did predestinate, them now he also called. Sasa yu ni mutu watu wako pale. Kabura itane. You see, anajua hapa, niko na viti vitatu. Na pale kumejaa watu. Sasa, kama ingekua mimi binadamu, ningesanga. Sasa, wale watu, nikiwaita, I think I should whisper to them, because I have only three seats. That, now, that's the human thinking. Because I have three seats here, I, can, I think I can whisper to them. If I tell them, come, I will not have space for them. But that is not how God works. God will tell all of them, come, and he has three seats. Because by his foreknowledge, he knows it is three who will come. That's the difference between us and God. He anajua ni wengi. Nandiyo Yesu walikuwa anasema, nandiyo injili inahubiriwa watu wote. Mungu anajua ni nani wakuja na ni nani si wakuja. Oh yes. Mungu dia anajua ni nani wakuitikia wito, ni nani si wakuitikia wito. Sasa yeye anasema njooni. Yeah. Ande Yesu Kristo alikuwa anasema wale wote baba amenipa si, sio mapenzi yangu yeyote hapo 
hapotei lakini wale baba amenipa hakuna hata mmoja atapotea wale wamekusudiwa hakuna hata mmoja amekosa atakosa kiti lakini wito utatolewa kwa wote but god being god by his foreknowledge knows you will answer the other one will heed the call the other one will not heed the call so those he whom he predestinated he called and whom he called anaanza kufanyia utaratibu he justified he glorifies he sanctifies jina la bwana lipewe sifa to make them what to make them fit for the kingdom to bring them to his own image you see jina la bwana lipewe sifa so it's a process it is a process it's a process that pro- it's a, it's a, it's a it's a process and when you understand it's a process you are able to understand the steps the steps they are in you you give heed you give consideration to every process within the process to every step within the process in understanding that to be able to achieve the final product na ndio maana tunaitwa watu wa neno neno kwa sababu neno lazima liungane na neno na neno na neno lilete kile Mungu anataka hatuwezi weka lingine kado every iota of the word is important in the whole process so that's why we don't choose we don't choose what what to heed we don't choose what to like tumeitiwa neno lote jina la bwana lipewe sifa so it's a it's a process and and the prophet says uh, you give, uh, uh, bro you can you give me that uh, uh, paragraph 40, 44 um that uh, the message we were reading last time the prophet says <clears throat> uh, he likens it to what we were calling last time uh, a metamorphosis and in we were saying in a metamorphosis uh, ama katika kubadilika kwa kiumbe vile kiumbe kinabadilika in that is simple science an insect will start with an egg the, the, then it will, it will transform into a larva then into a pupa and then it becomes an adult and sometimes you when you go to what it was yesterday you may not really know it when you find that adult butterfly you may never believe it is the caterpillar you saw some other day you see when you find that's why you are saying when you find that that zacchus you might fail to understand that this is the zacchus who was collecting tax the other day this is the samaritan woman who had a very bad name that this is rehab you may not tell somebody said don't judge me by yesterday a process has taken place something has happened I, i am not what you are looking for you see i'm not what what you are looking for so the prophet saying here uh z44 be transformed be transformed to be transformed is to be changed and made something different like a tadpole it's transformed from a tadpole to to a frog see once he looked like a catfish he swims around he's he's got head and his tail and everything looks like a catfish and then after a while he begins to lose he loses the tail <laughs> oh jina la bwana lipewe sifa yeah you know when god was beginning the the reformation yeah and you would sasa ungekuta ungekuta luther na kikosha yenkile ako tu na kile kiko anakivuta you see you know that was just a tadpole with 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 the sti- with the with the tail hanging you see but but you see as it proceeded another process started 
of sanctification. So you, you, you don't need to force the tail to go. When sanctification comes, the kiko had to go. And every other thing that was not of righteousness had to go. And another, another stage comes, and another stage comes, until we have the bride who is in his own image, who has the full word revealed to her, whom she has washed by the washing by, of the waters by the word, who is without now spot or wrinkle. It has been a process. You see, after a while, he begins to lose. He loses the tail, and he is transformed now into another speech. You see, it's now an, it's now something different, but it has been a process. You see, now the the, the, the prophet talks talking about the process. If I might read something more here. Uh, let me read a story here the prophet was given. In the message, there is a man here who can turn on the light. Uh, if you'll give me somewhere, paragraph, uh, paragraph 181. Uh, uh, like the Queen of England, once she, made, she went to a great paper company, and she said she would look, she would like to see through the paper mills. Yeah. Something that's usually very thrilling. One of the visits, best visits I, 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 I ever made, or you, I, I always feel is of benefit, is when you go to some factory and you, and you, you get that opportunity, you see, to, to see what uh, they say the behind the scenes. Yeah. Before, before this soda comes to me in a bottle, the behind the scenes, what happens? And so the queen wanted to see what happens, how do we get these papers? And so they showed her the paper mills many years ago before they went to making it into pulp and stuff. So they find making papers out of it. So, so they well, after a while, she came, and as she was going around, she came into a room that it was nothing but a big old pile of dirty rags. And she said, where did this come from? What is this? Oh, she said. Then the president of the plant, probably taking her around, said, this is what will make the paper out of these dirty rags. And she said, that make paper? What? Yes. She couldn't hardly believe it. And so after she was gone, the man took the same dirty pile of rags and ran them through a certain process and brought them out a clean, pure paper. You know, that had went through a process and made real and not just that and put her profile in it and she sent it to her reflecting herself in this what she called that rags oh you can imagine now what the prophet was already imagining that out of this dirty rags the queen was able to see her image imprinted on a paper that was made from the dirty rags. You see? And that's what it is. The dead things of yesterday. The message of Luther. The message of Wesley. The message of Pentecost. If it can only go through the process of God's Holy Spirit and the word of a vindication meaning for your day. It will bring forth the reflection of Jesus Christ, the King. Oh, amen. But if you leave it, lay its dirty rags. In other words, what was of Luther has to 
go on the next stage of the process into Wesley, into Pentecost, into the vindication of the word to bring the full image of Christ. Otherwise, if you are stuck there with Luther, those will be dirty rags of yesterday. It's got to be molded into something else. Luther has got to be molded into Wesley. Wesley has got to be molded into Pentecost. And Pentecost has got to be molded into Christ. Now, you see the danger now of being stuck somewhere in the process. And that is how what all denominationalism is about. Being stuck somewhere in a process. You see, ukikwama mahali kwa huu mchakato, uta, utakuta, uta, utajikuta we unakula uchafu ya factory. Na final product, inakuwa packed this other end. You see, it's being packed fresh <laughs> and good for use. On the other end, wewe ulikwama huko kwa factory. Wewe ulikwama mahali kulikuwa na maganda. Watu wanakoroga sukari mwisho ule sukari likamilika wewe ulikuwa makwa maganda <laughs> you see may god help us and that is how god has been working and making sure that he, the life has gone on the process has moved forward so you got to be molded to the other one it goes through a process you see, let me read that again. It's got to be molded into something else. Luther has got to be molded into Wesley. Wesley has got to be molded into Pentecost. And the Pentecost has to be molded into Christ. It goes through a process. And then you must understand also when a process has come to an end. Because there is an end result. And we thank God for the prophet. We thank God for the revelation of the word because now we can see everything to its completion. Kwa sababu sasa kitu kikikamilika na wewe unafikiria kijakamilika ni kukiharibu na kiharibu. My father always used to tell me when you are doing woodwork kama umetengeneza hicho kile kama ni kichana. Tengeneza kichana na kumbuka ile woodwork ya zamani na chonga kichana kwa kwa kutoka kwa ude labda kina vijiti vinne ukikikikamilika ukimalizana nacho sasa kiweke it's good to know when you have done you have polished it to your level best so that now you leave it if you continue unastuka umevunja kimoja and you no longer now have a, 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 a kichana kikivunjika mti mmoja the whole image is lost you see and that's why you should be so much in line with the god's mathematics ndio sasa ujue wakati mungu anahitimisha kazi yake usipoelewa anahitimisha utaanza kutafutilia mjumbe mwingine na mwingine that's why people are coming up with strange messages that have no place in the scriptures but the, 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 the purpose of the vindication of the message of the hour is now to give us the full picture. When the body has been capped, when the capstone has come, I don't know what else you will be doing on that tip. It is already tip. It is already tip ended. You cannot build anything else from there. So that's why it's so good to understand the beginning and the continuation and the end of any process you see it goes through a process it is so has the gospel gone through a process it's processing luther's age of justification we believe that wesley's of sanctification we believe that and the pentecostals of the restoration of the gifts for the holy ghost we believe that certainly but mold it all together what do you come up with jesus right the same yesterday today and forever 
Oh, it will come out with Jesus. Jina la Bwana alipewa sifa. So, God being now the master builder here. God being now the the the, the manufacturer. Vile alisema ni yeye, anasema katika waefeso ni yeye anajitwalia huyu bibi harusi to bring unto himself so he knows he knows what he is doing in there you see na na anaanzia i like when you read the book of ephesians you, you i actually see it as a process kwa sababu tumesema hii process inaanza na jambo moja this transformation is transformation on the predestinated seed ni mbegu iliyokusudiwa kimbele kwanza it is trapped somewhere and god comes and he catches it by the revelation of the word and starts working on it so it starts by predestination so that's why when paul is talking in ephesians chapter 1 that's what he started with he started with we we that we started with the predestination you see and it goes on If, if i may if i may just keep something here a bit uh, I, i will come to it and and uh, uh, is that a vision? yeah he starts by predestination that's why he was saying in chapter one of Ephesians, according uh, blessed be the god and the father of our lord jesus christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ jesus what does it start according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will That's where it begins. It is by predestination and it, you cannot achieve it in any other way. So that now the process begins when he comes to chapter 2 and he says, "And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses. You are predestinated but you are there in the trespasses, lost." So that now he begins now to work on you. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, because you are born into this world you came shaped in iniquity born in sin came speaking lies you see according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience and whom we also had our conversation in times past in the lust of flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh that's why you know in romans he is calling do not be conformed into that world but now be transformed on the based on the start seed of predestination into that full image of Christ you see and he continues like that until now when you go to chapter 3 he is now he is now a prisoner he says now i prisoner i paul a prisoner of the lord jesus christ you see this 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 a transformed person and now in chapter 5 he comes and says this is the kind of bride that the christ is looking for without spot or wrinkle she is now ready for marriage so in that process he knows that's why he says to bring unto himself a church a bride so it is him working on her and the prophet now says uh, take us back to where we were uh, now 185 he likens that to a person working in a in a, in a foundry ama uh, ama it's not a blacksmith blacksmith works by cutting uh, pieces of and joining them as uh, we foundry i think tunawa ni watu na waita wa wahunzi wale wale wanachemsha wanachemsha chuma na ana mold the mold what they want yeah they smelt that whether it's aluminum and then they have molds they can pour that mold mold into it and come up with the shape they want 
Now the prophet says, when a man in a foundry is making a bell. Now, making a bell is not just making a bell. A bell is meant to produce a certain tone, a certain sound. And for that, to achieve that tone, the person making the bell has to know what to add and to bring together in what quantities. And lazima ajue na itaji kiwango cha nini na nini na nini ndiyo itoe ule mulio anaotaka. You see, yeye, yeye ndiye anatafuta, yeye ndiye anajua mulio unaohitajika. You see, Ana, anajua, anajua kuna inaria hivi, kuna inaria na mna nyingine, kuna inaria na mna nyingine, na, sio, na mulio sio mulio tu, kuna ule mlio anataka na yeye anajua you see now he knows he's got a certain tone he has to put in it and when he is setting his mold and pouring his iron he puts in so much brass or so much steel or so much copper in other words he knows the quantity to put for each. Anajua ikiwa na too much brass, it makes this tone. With a little copper or this amount of copper, this is the tone it produces. If you want a high pitch tone, maybe you need much of this. If you need a, a, a dull, low tone, maybe it is more of this and less of this. Yeye ndiye ako na hiyo katika ujuzi wake. So why? He knows just exactly how much to put to make or to give it the right tone, you see. And that's what Jesus has done by his bride. He had to put so much Luther or, or, or this bit of Luther and this bit of Methodist and this bit of Presbyterian or this bit of Pentecost you see but what does he come out with his own reflection and what is it because it's a process even this mystic body it's been a process it was at the foundation stage a, a, a foundation of faith and so on and so forth it has been a process and he knew how much to put at each stage you see na alijua huyu na kile unajua kile Mungu yeye anaweka ni ni alikuwa anajifunua ni ufunua waneno lake anajifunua kiwango hiki anajifunua kiwango hiki anajifunua kiwango hiki na akijua majukumu ya bibi harusi wa siku za mwisho ambaye ndiye kupitia kwake hawa wote waliolao atawamshwa alijua anahitaji sasa utimilifu wa neno lote you see what does he come out with is only reflection what is it just like a pyramid message you see it's heaping right up this come into the minority with the headstone the ministry of Jesus Christ on earth has to be the same as the ministry he had or he can't come to it he knew at the evening time it had to be Luke 17 you see that he it had to be the son of man revealed in the flesh again he knew that's what he needed you see he can't come in other way just like the head to the feet no the feet is not the head but the head packs the feet you see or or makes the feet or tells the feet where to go we should have the time to go 
deep into this. You see, you get it beautifully. It is the light of the hour. We are in such a privilege that the capstone message is here with us. The, we are witnessing the completion of the process. And like the, the, the way the Bible says, all of them, all of them that were part of the process, we read about them in Hebrews chapter 11, men of great faith, you see. And Paul mentions all of them. And he says, what do, and, and they are murderers, they are great people. In fact, the language Paul uses says, and what can we say about this and that? What can we say about that? What of so and so? You see, they are great people. But he says, he ends by saying that if we, if we may read it together uh, in, in, in Hebrews, uh, in the, is that Hebrews 11? Um, uh, Hebrews 11. After the whole process, uh, when the whole process comes to an end, yeah, and, and it's a very great, very wonderful things. He speaks about them. What can we say? Oh, what shall I say more? And even in somewhere he says, what shall I say more? For time would defer me to tear of Gideon. And we marvel at their greatness. Yeah? End of Barak. End of Samson. End of Japheth. Jaf, Jaf, end of David. End of Samuel. End of the prophets. You see. We would say so many wonderful things of them that you are part of the process. But now he says, these people who did mighty things, they subdued the kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they obtained promises, topped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Oh my. And he said, to, to jump to verse that he, that he, uh, that nine, and this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. You see, God having provided something better for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And now, this was Paul speaking in the church at the foundation. What now, the prophet says, we had the opportunities that even Paul did not get. What now of the evening time bride who now witnesses the full glory of God? Oh, it is such, it is such, it is such a privilege that we are very thankful uh, to God for. Was it was a great light, yes. Like he said to John the Baptist, it was a great light for this hour. You see, that's why it's always good to understand the process. Uh, and that's what even Jesus was trying to show them. Uh, because, like, because like you are saying, the, 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 the challenge with the man always is being stuck somewhere along the way. Yeah. Not knowing that God moved on. So that's why they could not understand Jesus. You see, they had the great things they would say about their father Abraham, about Moses, and how he provided the manna to them in the wilderness, not knowing that now the bride of life is here with them. They ate that and they all slept. But now the bread that gives eternal life is here with you. It was there with them, but they were still stuck somewhere in the process. So, and the, even Jesus, when he came, it was the same thing. He appreciated John the Baptist. And he said, no, no person born of a woman is greater than John the Baptist. But what was he saying? But now the light is here. Yes, sir. The clean rags... The old 
the dirty rags of yesterday if you remain that way it will just become dirty rags all the time it served its purpose as clothing but now it's become paper justification served its time in justification and aluda and it had to come sanctification through Wesley and sanctification served its time till it became the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost served its time the gifts were restored you see and they were very okay and very good until the Holy Spirit which there is only one God blends into the church and the church into Christ and he makes Jesus Christ reflected on the earth. Now, from this old rugged, these dirty rugs, these dirty rugs in, in, the, in, in, in the form of Zacchaeus, in the form of Samaritan woman, in the form of me, in the form of you, from them to get a reflection of Jesus Christ. So that, that's why this president of this company made this work. From them rags that the queen saw in some store somewhere, when that paper was made, he sent her one with uh, an image, with her image. Do you Sasa, he's in Nizita Takataka Uriona. Lakini Sasa Ona, it's a clean paper that bears your image. That this is the lost son who was so much lost in sin, you see, but now has been transformed into the image of Christ. He is now a very dear and wonderful brother. This is a very dear and wonderful sister. The past is now forgotten. She is justified. Her sins have been not only forgiven, but justified. The the, it, like she never seen it before like he never seen it before that is the state of the bride you see he promised there in the bible uh, to make Jesus Christ reflected on the earth what he promised here in the bible may might not believe it I can't make you do that I'm only responsible for the word you see and somewhere else we may not have time because our time is spent, we may not read. The prophet says, it's a process. And in that process, he says in the, it's in the question, of the, uh, question and answers, uh, 540516. And he says, when it's a process, he compares it to when a car is being packed, that box car. And the thing, the goods are being packed inside and being packed and being packed. And it reaches a place that the inspector has to come and say, it is now perfectly arranged and full. And he slams the door and puts the seal thereon. You see, that's why even if Paul when speaking in the book of Ephesians, when he reaches to chapter 4, verse 30, he says, You are now, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, into whom you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. At the end of the process, there is a sealing. And he seals us. This is my child, in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. And we are wait looking for that. Hear ye him, where we can speak his word, and it comes to be. Hear ye him. Now the prophet says that for that seal to come, you may not be where you want to be, but you are in a process. You see, and the seal will come comes when that process is complete. So if now, what is this image you are talking about? That the Christ is now reflected in the believer. And, and the prophet was talking, was giving us stories uh, in, the time, in the time of Wesley. 
during that well, uh, Welsh revival. And he, he uh, as it's a story we have read some other time, and he said, one man went during, over, during, uh, uh, over to Wales uh, during the time of the Welsh revival. I mean, not Wales, but in the, in the Wales. A bunch of, during the revival times, a bunch of men went to the United States. And so they go down and they said they want to find out what building was holding this Welsh revival in. And many of you remember the Welsh revival. Great revival broke out amongst the Welsh people in the Wales. Uh, so these men, these great big ministers and so forth, went from the United States and they doctors of divinity. They wanted to go over and see what great thing they had done, you know. And so they were walking down the street and they said, May, and met a little old policeman standing on the corner, wheeling his his club around. Maybe it was just a traffic police, or, or, or you see, or police just putting some order somewhere with his with his club, enjoying and rejoicing, enjoying his work. Oh yes, the way we should define ourselves, enjoying our work and rejoicing in in the revelation of the word. You see. And this policeman was very happy and very jovial. And he was whistling a hymn, you see. Like they said, well, he is just whistling a hymn. Uh, we might go up and see him, uh, see what he is going to do. Why? Ask him a question. And so they went up to him and said, Sir, where is the Welsh revival at? And he tipped his, off his heart and he said, Sir, the Welsh Revival is held in here, in his heart. Oh, that's it. He was the Welsh Revival. Christ wants people who are the message. They are very good on the shelves uh, in our libraries and, and in tapes and, and our phones, you see. But now he wants the message itself, living and walking. He tipped off his heart and said, Sirs, the world's revival is held in here, in his heart. Oh, that's it. He was the world's revival. Oh, God, if we can only, only understand that we are the reflection of Jesus Christ, his word made manifest. You are the reflection of his word. The world is hungry. The world is desiring to see God in action, to see God alive, to see the word alive. Some people know there is a Bible and it says good things, but listen, where are these people? Why are them people that can live this kind of life? Is there anybody? And that's why that drunkard would say, oh my, as much as you may say that, I think I have one in the house. My wife could be such a person. One who has become the word. You see, oh God, if we can only, only understand that we are the reflection of Jesus Christ, his word made manifest, you are the reflection of his word. Why is the world revival? Where is the message of the hour? What building is it in? And he said, Sir, it is in my heart. He was the Welsh revival. That's right. And today, the church ought to be Jesus Christ in action upon the earth. Because I live, you live also. And my life will be in you. And the works that I do, will you do also, you see the church has got to get to that place. See? And he promised it would do it. And it will. It's got to come that way. You see? That's what got to take place. And we got to be that way. That is the final result. That is the end product of the transformation process. But like we said in the beginning, the due process has been followed. Every iota of the word 
word on top of the word, word that on top of the word, and the revealed word of our day. May God help us to smile. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus on earth, I long, as the pastor comes, to be like him all through life's journey. Name from earth to glory. I only ask to be like to be like Jesus to. so glad by thine grace you chose us father before the foundation of the world and put us into this process whereby father you may have in the end your own reflection you may have people that are so much like you lord they are just you and that is the essence of the bride because your bride, as wife, is part of the husband, you so much intended that you would have a bride, one that is so much like you. Just in the way you didn't have a spot, you didn't have a wrinkle, you didn't have any unbelief in you. And that's what you told the Jews. You ask, can anybody accuse me of unbelief? Can anybody accuse me of sin? And precious Lord, you determined you would have a bride that doesn't have a wrinkle, doesn't have a spot. And precious Lord, you ordained that it will be very tight. That after this long process, a very long process, sometimes a very painful one, as we have had many had to suffer so much in that process, but in the end, precious Lord, you come and you have one, a bride that doesn't have a spot or wrinkle, one that is just like you, so that Lord perfection may come in. For you said in this process, though many went through it, though many did so great things, they never saw perfection, they never came to the end to the head park, to the, to, to, to the head of things that you had determined, that finally you would have one, a bride, that you are not ashamed to live with. And precious Lord, we thank you very much that by grace we have seen this process going on, and we are here at the head and seeing what you have done and what you are doing and what you have done with your message. It may not appear much to the world, but, oh God, we know this is the greatest thing. It is the greatest time we have. Where the seals have been opened, where the word, the word has been opened and has put you into a plain view, now that you are known as you wanted to be known, now that you are worshipped the way you have always wanted to be worshipped. The devil has always brought things and here and there, try to confuse things 
to be heard that he may be worshipped as he has always wanted. And oh God, you said you will have a people, you will have a bride. And Lord, we thank you very much. We are living in such a time where, Lord, thy word has been so clear and opened unto us. Precious Lord, we thank you. We do thank you for that desire that you have put in us, desire to follow you, desire to live according to thy word, desire, precious Father, to thirst and hunger after your word, your righteousness. We thank you, Lord. It is not what we have made ourselves to be. It is not by might thy word says. It is not by power. It is by thine spirit. God, it is you that does these things. So we just rejoice and thank you very much that you have given us eyes that can see what you are doing. We can understand the situation that is there even in the world. Precious Lord, it is so wonderful to be your child. We thank you, we magnify your holy name. Heavenly Father, we plead with you that you forgive us so that where we have dedicated, where, Father, we have tended to be stuck, and form a denomination which all of it it is. Precious Father, forgive us. Deliver us from everything that is contrary to thine will. Deliver us, Father, from vanities of this life. Enable us to desire you, to desire you desperately, that you may come in. Precious Lord, we do thank you for using your servant this evening bring to us that word. God, we thank you. For we know this is what is preparing us for the takeoff. And Father, we do thank you that you put that in him. And Lord, we do praise you and thank you. And pray for him that you strengthen him more. You enable him more loving Father. You lead him to that total surrender where Father you may take him and use him according to thy will and purpose. And as also, Father, as we hear this word, we know it takes a believer to believe. And Lord, we do thank you and pray you help us to believe every word, to accept what thou have in store for us, which we believe is the message of our day, so that we may be molded until we are all like you, Lord, to be like Jesus. That is what we long for. Our loving Father, tonight we are here. We look unto thee, you are helping our strength. And you know along this process, along the way, there are so many difficulties sometimes. Precious Lord, we pray you help us. Come in, precious Lord. Use the words that thou have promised to make life bearable. Oh Lord, you knew along the way we would have difficulties. Along the way we would get sicknesses of our bodies. So you took care of it, Lord. For you said, by your stripes we were healed. So we pray, Father, any of us here or wherever they are, maybe at home or streaming, and are well, we pray, loving Father, let thy word be manifested. Let Father, thy promise be fulfilled, that by thy stripes we are healed. May they all receive the healing for your glory and for your honor. Father, you know we need you so much. Many times we don't know what to do. Sometimes the way becomes so difficult in life, and Father, without you wouldn't know. But knowing that God, you are God, that is not controlled by any circumstance. As you said, and you told Moses, is anything too hard for the Lord? Surely there is nothing that is too hard for you. So whatever circumstance that faces us, Father, God, we pray you help every brother and every sister to know that thou art God that liveth, to know you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and take courage and believe so that all of us, Father, we may see the glory of God. We commit everything in your hands. And as we prepare to leave, may your presence go with each one of us. Protect us, keep us precious, Lord, and put a desire in our hearts to come again, Father, to fellowship with you. We pray, we trust you, Father, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you as we go to be like Jesus to be like Jesus all the time long to be like thee all through life's journey from up to glory I only ask to be